Just try and try and try until you can't try anymore, and then try some more. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Divyanka and I'm a doctor of pharmacy here in the US. On this channel, it is my goal to help both you and I live our best and most productive life. Today, we are talking about how to find research opportunities, whether you're in college, undergrad, or pharmacy school. A lot of you have been reaching out in regards to my experience with research, whether if it was a part-time job, how I actually got it, all of those details. I know I've mentioned it in past videos that I've gotten research experience through pharmacy school, so I thought I'd sit down and explain how I got those opportunities. Now I do want to say I was in pharmacy school and research is not a typical path for a pharmacy student. Usually research leads to doing your PhD or going through the MD track. So this information might not be completely relevant to every pharmacy student, but that was an experience I got during my pharmacy school years and I do think they helped me in various ways. So I think it's always worth something. I was wanting to look for something different and challenging in terms of experience when I was seeking these opportunities. So I I just wanted to change and if you're someone out there who still wants to be within the realm of science and get a different sort of opportunity, especially if you're in pharmacy school, most of the opportunities for us are being a pharmacy technician and that's definitely great experience but there are other experiences out there that you really can make use of and gain a lot from and in hindsight it was probably one of the best things I could have done for myself. So for anyone out there interested in actually gaining those experiences, I wanted to share how I did it. Now in terms of the exact experience I got. I was a part-time research assistant during a couple of my years in pharmacy school within three separate labs at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, which is a cancer hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, and at one lab at Boston Children's Hospital. Now, when I was first seeking research opportunities, I didn't know much about research in and of itself, the actual pathway and where that can lead you in your career. I was just looking for something a little more challenging. I wanted to learn more about different therapeutic areas, learn more about science processes and I thought this would be one way to gain that experience. So how did I actually land these positions? These positions were completely not affiliated with my pharmacy school or my pharmacy program and they were a part-time job. So this was something I sought out separate from school. And I just wanna mention that because even though I went to a health sciences school, I didn't find as much guidance to seek these positions out other than actually putting in the work myself. So as most of you probably know, Boston is of course a great hospital hub and within hospitals and the big institutions, many different labs laboratories exist. So what I did was I searched for different labs through the different hospitals in Boston. So mainly that's Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Boston Children's Hospital, Beth Israel Deaconess, MGH, etc. I didn't really know exactly how to contact the PIs or the principal investigators of each of the labs, which would I assume be the main contact to ask if they have open positions. So I went through lists of labs through each hospital found the actual lab web page for again each lab and most lab web pages do share the contact information of at least the administrator of the lab or the PI of the lab. So I would then take those emails, send either the PI or the administrator an email about my interest in wanting to gain research experience, of course share a little bit about myself, and hope for a response. This was right when I was pretty new to really engaging in a lot of cold emailing and this is exactly where it started. So through that process I sent about 200 to 200 120 cold emails to different labs within the Boston area inquiring about any type of opening that I would really fit in to gain that experience. This was early on within my pharmacy program. It was only in my second year so I had four more years of school and so I knew I kind of had time to build experience so I was pretty flexible in terms of what work I was given. I just kind of wanted to get my foot in the door. I was open to it not being paid and being a volunteer position and I was open to being flexible about what hours I could come in. Thankfully, my school was actually right on the street of most of the hospitals, so it was very easy for me to commit to certain hours, even if they were during the day. So if I had a big enough chunk between classes or something like that, then I could easily go to one of the labs if I got a position. And again, I think being flexible in that way definitely helped me gain a position. So through that cold emailing, I got maybe 20 responses, out of which 10 to 15 of them were straight no's, either because the lab didn't have enough funding or they didn't have any anyone in the lab to train me or other such factors. Out of the 200 some emails that I sent, I got two requests saying that they would possibly be 
interested. So I set up in-person interviews and I went and talked to the PI of those labs. One of the labs happened to be a great fit. At the time they needed some help, but they weren't able to actually have an actual paid position for a research assistant. So again, I was flexible. I was open to just gaining some experience. So I gladly accepted that role for one semester. It was a volunteer position. I would go to the lab and I would mainly learn from one of the scientists there and just kind of watch and help out in any projects that she was doing. Now that I had got my foot in the door, it was pretty easy to then transition from there. So once that semester ended, my PI was very transparent in saying that, hey, you know, we would love to have you and keep you, but there's no way that we can really make this into a paid position. But she was nice enough to refer me to another lab that did need help and had the budget to have a position. So that was kind of how I landed my next position. And the same thing with the next lab that I was at at Dana-Farber, it was just kind of through communications and one lab saying they need someone and my PI or someone I worked with being like, hey, you know, maybe this is a great opportunity. So this really shows you kind of the importance of getting your foot in the door. The Boston Children's position at a lab happened in the same way. That was actually just a shorter assignment. I did spend most of my time at Dana-Farber. And of course, as I progressed through the different labs and as I spent more time there, my responsibilities grew and I learned a lot more. So again, if you start early enough, it's easy to kind of start slow and then learn a lot and naturally progress into having more responsibilities, learning more, etc. So now I wanna lay out some tips that helped me in landing a position. And of course, I hope these tips really help you in landing a research position if that's what you want. My first tip would be to start early in terms of timeline. So whether you're an undergraduate student, a graduate student, you're in pharmacy school, you're in some other graduate school, it doesn't matter. If this is something you want to get experience in, you could start as early as high school. And again, I think that the progression of actually learning things is a lot slower within research labs and it's easy to kind of progress once you get your foot in the door. So, so the earlier you get your foot in the door, of course, the better it is for you. So like I mentioned, I started my first position within my sophomore year, so my second year out of my six-year pharmacy program. If you're pursuing a bachelor's degree, then really look for this maybe in your first or second year. It's definitely never too late. So regardless of where you are, if this is something you want, go after it. But if you can plan for it, I would suggest doing it earlier rather than later. That also gives you time to assess if this is something you really like. If it's something you like, then maybe it'll really determine your career and what experiences you gain after this position. And if you don't like it, then again, it's really going to affect that. So in my case, I definitely learned a lot, but knew that that wasn't really where I was going to end up. So again, it was really helpful in assessing that, but still getting me experience and giving me science exposure on the way. My second tip is to have a really good cold email template for this purpose. So because I emailed emailed so many different labs, of course I didn't just type everything up every single time. I had a general template that I was following and that really helped me be efficient in terms of getting those emails out and getting that communication started. So really sit down, take your time to make that template where it's short enough, it's efficient, it's concise and to the point, but it has a level of personability and really will invite the other person to start the conversation with you. You don't have to reinvent the wheel in terms of what you have to say every time you're contacting contacting someone. So keep that in mind. And again, having this template is really going to help you be efficient in actually contacting labs. My third tip is to do your research on the lab that you are contacting. Like any cover letter for any job, you still want to be personable enough and tell them why you want to work in that specific lab. There are hundreds of different labs and they know that. So why do you want to work there? What intrigues you about the science they're working on? Have you heard about that PI before? Whatever it is, you want to make sure you do your research on what that lab actually does, what their main projects are, what specific idea within science are they working on, and again, why you would actually want to spend your time there. Then you want to take this little snippet of your research and put that within your email template when you're cold emailing someone. Again, that's gonna give the personal touch and make sure that your message doesn't come across as a super cookie cutter message that may turn someone off to respond to you. But here, if you're explaining to them exactly why you're interested in that lab, that's of course only going to help you out. It'll help you stand out because I'm sure they get hundreds and hundreds of emails and of course you're more likely to get a response. The next tip is to follow up. Do not be afraid to follow up. It doesn't have to be immediately. You can pick your interval, whether it's a week, two weeks, three weeks. If you don't get a response within X amount of time, then follow up with that PI saying, hey, 
I sent this email X amount of time ago. I was just wanting to follow up on it. Everyone super busy has a million emails coming through every day and it's very easy for someone to miss your email or even have read it but then forget about it. So a follow up is a gentle reminder that you sent an email if they hadn't seen it before and see your follow up email then they'll go back and pay attention to it and if they did read it it'll serve as a reminder to respond. This also gives it a more personal touch because you're actually following up on a message that you sent and you want to have a conversation so again, this is going to help you to hopefully have that in-person or on-the-phone conversation with the PI or the administrator. And that leads me to my next tip, which is to actually ask for setting up a time, whether that's in person or right now in a more virtual world, on a call or via Zoom. You don't just want to communicate this through email and you want to be able to show your excitement and why you want to work in this lab, again, in person as much as possible. So at the end of your email template, make sure that you have a portion of the email that that's stating that you'd like to talk to them and if they have a 30 minute window or sometime on their calendar where you can convene and talk then you would appreciate that and again this is going to help you make that relationship and hopefully more likely for you to land a position within a lab. My next tip is to be okay with volunteering at first. Like I mentioned, that's what I had to do for the first semester that I got research experience and that led me to many more experiences that weren't just volunteer. If you start early enough, then you're young enough and that's completely fine to just gain experience through volunteering. Be open to that, be flexible because a lot of different labs are constrained in terms of how much grant money or how much budget they have for open positions. So if you're really trying to get your foot in the door the best way without any experience is to again be flexible and be open to free work. And my last tip is to be extremely persistent. Like I mentioned, I sent 200 some emails and if I didn't get a position through those emails, I would have sent a lot more. So just keep trying. Try, try, try until you can't try any longer and then try some more. Just keep sending those emails, keep following up and you're bound to get something because, because that persistence and that communication will help. You have to put the work in and everybody wants a research position. You're competing with everyone in healthcare, all the pre-med students, etc. So you're gonna have to put the effort to actually get something valuable. Like I mentioned, it's probably one of the best things I did for myself, but I really did have to take out the time to send those emails, carve out those conversations, have those conversations, do my research, talk to PIs, talk to different people. So again, it does take a lot of effort, but it's definitely, definitely worth it. I hope overall that video was helpful for those of you who have reached out in regards to any questions about my research experiences. If you guys actually want to know what I did within my research experiences, we can talk about that in another video, but that is it for today's video. As always, if you guys have any follow-up questions, let me know either through the comments below or you can directly contact me via my email. That is a wrap for this video, and of course you guys will see me in the next one. Mm -hmm.